Shalom and welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels. I'm a wife and mom of four living in Israel. And today I wanted to share with you a few things I wish I knew before becoming a mother. Now everyone has their own, excuse me, excuse me. Now everyone has their own journey in parenting. There's lessons that you're gonna learn things that you're gonna learn about yourself, your spouse, your kids, and things also change as they grow and develop. That's what's so amazing about this parenting journey. It's always changing. There's always new challenges and new uh, things to learn as part of your journey. These are a few things that I uh, personally have learned and things that I wish I knew before becoming a mom. If you're an expectant mom or if you're already a mom, I would love to know if any of these resonated with you. And if you have any thoughts or comments about any of these, I would love to read. I read all the comments and I love, and I would love to hear from you. The first one is your time becomes super valuable. After you become a parent, there's just so much more to do, right? You have to take care of the baby or a few babies and kids. You have the household, the cooking, the laundry. Sometimes it's not like you wake up all of a sudden with a few kids and lots of lo loads of laundry. It happens gradually, but all of a sudden you're, time is filled you have a whole world of things going on and this isn't to scare you or say like you won't have time for anything no it just means that you have to focus more and know more like what you want to do with your life what do you want to do with your free time like I have a few friends that uh, two friends I think are thinking about becoming a nurse and this is something that they realized on later after having a few kids and it's much harder when you have kids so like, you know, before having kids, if you're in your early 20s or whatever, before you have kids, going to nursing school or going to any college degree is not the hardest thing to do. But once you have kids, you really have to prioritize and realize, is this really what I want to do? And for both of my friends, for now, it's no, I'm not willing to spend the time away from my family right now. This isn't the right season for me to do these things. And that's another thing. Your priorities are going to change and that's fine. You have to be more focused. What is important to you? Is it family? Is it exercise? Is it free time? Time with friends? You have to make the time and it's not as easy as before, but it's still possible and also important. If there's things that are important to you, it's important that you continue to do them and you don't, you know, drown in this motherhood, but you still find time to do things that are important to you. So that is something that there's less time because you're doing such an important thing and your world is filled. But it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, waste less time, focus more, val know what your priorities are more. The next one is it's okay not to be able to do everything at once. You know, some people, are, they're real doers and they love doing it. When you have a newborn, you have to kind of get into the mindset of, of being, right? You're just being with that child, soaking in the moments, and you have to kind of let go of maybe household chores or other things that you're used to and not to be upset at yourself if you can't kind of multitask and do a lot of things this is something that i learned very recently um sometimes you know i have four kids and two or more kids will need something from me at the same time and this used to make me really frustrated like i can't attend to their needs angry maybe angry that they even have these needs and i heard someone say this and i realized like focus in i'm one person i'm doing my best and then I calmly say, well, now I'm attending to Amiad, I'm changing Amiad's diaper. As soon as I'm finished, I'll be happy to attend to you. And kind of, and they accept it. Once you're calm, they accept it that you're not able to do everything at once. The mindset of being, doing your best, forgiving yourself for not be able, being able to do everything at once. And that's okay. And you're okay. You're doing your best. You're doing great. Not to get flustered by it and all upset um, that you can't attend to everyone's needs. If you're doing your best and you know that now this is the most important thing you have to do, you'll get to that other thing. I'll check on your homework soon. The one is you have the exact kids that you're supposed to and they have the exact challenges that they're supposed to have and that you're supposed to be able to help them with. Once you start having kids, you know, your life is very much unique to you. You have your husband, your life, your particular kids with their challenges. Some have a rough time getting pregnant, some have a rough time with their pregnancy, some postpartum, raising kids, everyone has their own challenges. A joke that my friend said was, what's the hardest for you? Getting pregnant, being pregnant, giving birth, or um, raising the kids? If, if one of them is your hardship, which one it is? I have a friend, for example, that for her, birth is something that she is terrified of. For some reason, her babies have 
large heads. They're like in the 90th percentile of head size. I don't know why. And birth is just something that she fears so much. But everyone's really, really unique. And with raising kids, everyone has different kids. Some kids really are more challenging, right? They have attention problems, medical issues, or whatever. They're just more challenging. We have this woman in our community who has five like seemingly perfect kids. They're just well-educated. And we always say, oh, what's your secret? And she says, I just have easy kids. And like, obviously she's also doing something right. And she even, like I see that she kind of lets her kids do their own thing. She's not like slaving away for them and making food for them. Like she kind of lets go when they're in the house. But also there is something what she's saying. She, thank God, Baruch Hashem, she really does have five easier kids. Like if you have this kid and you have these challenges, that means that these are tailored for you by God, by Hashem. These are the things that you're supposed to have. These are the kids that you're supposed to have with their challenges that they're supposed to have. And knowing that gives you the strength to deal with it. I know that I was given these children with these challenges and this is my lot. This is what I got. And I know that I have what it takes to deal with my kids the best way I can. The next one is the importance of your relationship with your spouse for your kids. Now, I didn't realize how important this was until I heard a well-known family guide in Israel say that a lot of times when she sees, most times when she sees issues with kids and families, a lot of times she says, check in on your relationship. How can you improve on your relationship? Now, why is this so important? Because first of all, emotional support for each other. You're working together to raise these kids. You're not working against each other. And also your kids see how you guys are talking to each other, how you relate, how you fight with each other. That's also important. I heard a really cool metaphor of this that kids, the environment that you have at home is like an aquarium and your kids are kind of soaking up everything in the atmosphere. So that is something to remember when you have some issues that arise with your kids to try to think, how can I improve your relationship? And then you get the support you need because you're working together and it also has a positive impact on the kids. The next one is build your village. A lot of times they talk about this, you know, postpartum, you want to have meal trains, you want to have support for those early days, but this is even more true for the following days, right? We used to live in tribes or like women had support. Uh, they worked together as a group and today modern society, you have your kids, you're pretty much isolated. Like, you have your kids, you're living your life. Um, not everyone is so lucky to have their parents and siblings living close by. Uh, we personally made a decision to live close to work so that we could be there for our kids, uh, which means that our parents don't live so close to us and we can't rely on them on a daily basis to be with our kids. But you just, it just means you have to work harder to create this village. If it, in the early days, finding a babysitter just to help you with the two little ones, watching the baby while you take care of the toddler, things like that, like paid things that you can do and also friends that you can help them, they can help you, uh, community um, work to create this village because it's not only the physical help that you need, right? If I'm a few minutes running a few minutes late uh, from work and I need someone to help me pick up, I'm gonna be a few minutes late. It's not just that, it's also emotionally you need the support your kids also need more figures uncles cousins grandparents like we realized recently that you know quality time with our grandparents it's not just about having them come and help us pick up the kids it's also about you want your kids to have that emotional um, relationship with their grandparents, with their uncles, with friends. The next one is it's okay if they aren't always happy. Learn to deal with bad emotions sometimes and to deal with it well. So in the early days with a newborn, you know, newborns cry. Sometimes they cry and, you know, of course you try to attend to their needs and, you know, feed them when they need to and diaper them and everything. But like, sometimes they may have a cry that, you know, can't really be answered, even if you're holding them. Also later on in the toddler stage and when they're in school, we're trying to attend to their needs, providing them food, providing them everything they need. But there will be times when they're upset, they're cranky, they came back from school and they're all wired and they need that time to like just let out bad emotion. And you as a parent, they need to see that you can handle this bad emotion, right? If, if the toddler is cranky, they need, oh, did we get stuck? If the toddler's cranky or in bad emotion, they need to see that you are not flustered by them, that you're the adult and you are able to accept by knowing that 
bad emotions will happen. Or if you're standing up for something that you, your house rules demand, like, and, and kids need some sort of framework. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to have a lot of things that you believe in and hold by and strict rules. You could be also uh, like me. I don't have that, that many rules, but if I do have a rule and I want to hold by it, so to know that they may have bad emotions and I'm not trying to, you know, like I validate their emotion. It's not that I say, oh, you're not allowed to be upset. I said that you can't do this. And no, no being upset. No, you let them be upset. You let them feel if they had a long day at work and they need to unwind. You let them feel you be okay with the fact that there will be bad emotions. Sometimes there will be bad feelings. And you as a parent, you're just there. You're their rock. They need you to be their strength. The next one is mindset makes all the difference. If this experience is going to be suffering or joy, a lot of it depends on the way we view things. And I thought of this the other day, I was taking uh, my toddler together with my baby, I was taking her to daycare and you know, she wanted me to bring her scooter. So I went back to get her scooter and then it took us a long time to get there and she wanted to pick flowers. And you know, we ended up getting like 20 minutes late to her uh, daycare. I thought to myself, wow, this was not enjoyable. I, I perceived it as like almost suffering. And then I looked back on it and I kind of reframed it. Wait a minute. I had a great morning. I took care of my kids. We were able to enjoy the way we picked flowers. I'm on maternity leave, so I'm not running to work or racing to work. You know, this time was just time I got to spend uh, with my daughter in the morning. It was great. So a lot of it depends on our mindset and the mindset, um, you know, yes, it will be chaotic. Yes, there will be, the house will be a mess, but to try to like, this is an enjoyable time. I'm raising humans. I'm doing the most satisfying role that there is to raise good humans in this world. Um, it's such an important role. And it's one that if we just change our mindset, we could enjoy it a lot of the time, not saying every moment, of course, there's moments that are hard and chaotic. Um, it's okay also to not enjoy every moment, but our mindset has such an impact. The last one, which is probably the most important one is that kids learn by action more than words. The most important way to educate your kids is they see how you are as a human, how you behave much more than what you teach them and what you say. They, they see the tone that you are. They see, um, how you relate to people. They see who you are. So that means that if you want to change your kids or if you want your kids to be better, or you just want great kids, you have to be that person. You have to be that person that you want your kids to become. If you want them to have emotional, uh, you know, emotional strength, you have to have that emotional strength to show them how to re relate. And I thought of it this morning, I was walking with the two little kids and there was a car that was parked and I, I couldn't get the double stroller through because he was blocking me and there was no one in the car. He just uh, double parked and I, I couldn't pass with the stroller. And my first instinct was like to get really angry. Oh my gosh, I can't pass. And I was about to like, and I said, wait a minute, my daughter Yael, she sees how I'm responding and how would I want her to respond to such a situation? I, it just meant I had to like take an extra 20 seconds and like go around uh, so I said, oh, I can't believe he's parked here. Okay, I tried to like minimize the, I was like almost getting really angry at this guy who was double parking and I had to go around. So that's an example of like, yes, they see how you behave when someone cuts you off in the road or all these situations, like you have to be the person you want. So it means it's not easy, but it means that you have to change yourself if you want to see a change in your kids. Motherhood is challenging, but it's also the most rewarding role and job in the world. I would love to hear if any of these resonated with you in the comments below. That would mean so much to me. And we are gonna take care of Amiya. We're gonna change his diaper now, so it's perfect timing. So thank you so much for being here, and I hope to see you in the next video. Shalom. Adi. Hello, hello, hello. Should we go change your diaper? Oh my goodness, we're gonna change Oh, what do we say? Baby? Baby.